Hey guys, it's Fran. I wanted to come on today and show you guys how I meditate because a big part of my entire life change and why things are going so well in my life right now is due to meditation. So this is a segment that I want to call Welcome to the Woo Woo because I don't know people don't feel like meditation is practical they feel like you're some kind of like strange person if you meditate um, but in all honesty nobody needs to know about your personal meditation practice it's something that you do it's all for you and it has enormous benefits in your life so I really want everyone to meditate if everyone in the world meditated the world would be such a much better place especially in America let me tell you about my practice this is what I do there are so many different ways to meditate you just have to find what works for you um, I've tried lots of different ways I'll tell you the easiest way for me and you can try some of the things that I do and see if it works for you so here's the thing I grew up in a Baptist church when I get mad when I got married I joined um, a seven-day Adventist church I totally believe in everything that I've learned from the Bible. I believe in 100% of the Bible. I believe from the front cover to the back cover. I believe from genuine leather. I believe the leather's genuine all the way to the back where the maps are. I believe the maps. Okay. So this is, has nothing to do with believing in, you know, all the, you know, tenets of Christian Christianity or not. But I've noticed that if you say anything about meditating in church, people get really weird about it they get either angry or they try to tell you that you shouldn't be doing that or it's devil worship or something like that I don't understand what that's all about I have a personal relationship with God and my meditation practice is my personal meditation practice I once heard it said and I'm not sure who said it I may go and look it up but I heard it said that prayer is when you're talking to God and meditation is when you're listening to God and I 100% believe that that is true because I found that in my life when I'm praying I'm just making my needs and my wishes and my desires known to God but when I stop to meditate and really quiet my mind for 10 minutes I found that I download all the information that the universe and that God is trying to tell me that I'm not listening to in my day-to-day -day life because my life is too noisy because I'm too busy, I'm doing too many things. So that quiet time that you have with God is really important. And it's all yours. It's a personal thing, it's like a date. It's like a quiet time date between you and the universe and what you call God or the higher power. And it's precious. So what I've noticed is that since I've been doing this, I've gotten so much more intuitive. I've gotten so much more peaceful calm I don't react to things as much as I used to and I'm able to um, go about my daily life with more insight and more purpose and more meaning so let me tell you about how I do that's like enough blah 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 for that for now let me tell you exactly what I do okay so the way that I'm sitting all right I have never been able to sit this way um, even when I was a small child when I was way more flexible than I am now I was never able to sit with my legs tucked under myself. My brother was able to I never was able to so After I had my babies, it's even my hips are even more stiff than they used to be So this is as good as it gets for me. My feet are not totally tucked in. You know, this ankle always hurts <laughs> Somehow my legs don't go all the way to the floor. I can't tuck my feet up here so it doesn't matter how flexible you are you don't have to be perfect you just have to be committed to trying so this is me committed to trying like this is the best that i can do Ta-da! and a lot of times i'm holding my ankle up here because i'm trying not to hyper hyper extend it because it really does hurt after a while you basically want to be sitting in a position that's not so comfortable that you fall asleep but not uncomfortable at all what i use to meditate is youtube now, some people will just have music playing in the background or complete and total silence. That doesn't work for me. My mind wanders. I'm making my grocery list in my head. It just doesn't work for me. If you listen right now, maybe on this video you can hear I have a fish tank right here. There's no fish in it. But I have a fish tank and the water is kind of trickling. 
Um, and that's a nice calming sound of just water, you know, trickling. If you have something like that, sometimes people will focus on that. Um, Esther, when Esther, you know, from Abraham Hicks, when she meditates, she says she focuses on the sound of the, like the air conditioner, you know, just some ambient noise, the air conditioner unit outside the window. You can kind of hear when it kicks on, it's making a little whirring noise. She focuses on that. Anything that you can focus on. Now, me, personally, like I said, that doesn't work for me. My mind just wanders. I forget what I'm focusing on. I, that doesn't work for me. So what I do, I go to YouTube, and in the search bar, I type in guided meditation. Four. I'm about to start working on things for Bold World. I'll meditate. I'll put in guided meditation for creativity, and I'll put in 10 minutes because I typically only meditate for about 10 minutes. If you put in 10 minutes, you'll get video, a list of videos that are like 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 9 minutes. So you can just pick based on how much time you want to spend. So I'll put in guided meditation for creativity, 10 minutes. Or if I'm about to meditate and I'm at work, like my day job, before I get started, um, I'll put in guided meditation for focus, 10 minutes. And I'll meditate at my desk. I'll put in guided meditation for productivity. If I have a big report that's due and I want to hurry up and knock it out, um, 10 minutes. I'll put in, now um, a couple weeks ago I hurt my back and I put in guided meditation for back pain, 10 minutes. And I did it and it actually worked. It actually healed my back pain. By the time I finished the meditation, I stood up and my back pain was gone. It was amazing. Um, but uh, I put in that and... I just did one earlier today, guided meditation for weight loss, because I was thinking about how I wanted to uh, maintain a healthy weight, and I was like, well, I do meditation for everything else. Let me just see if YouTube has guided meditation for weight loss. I put it in. They had it. I did one. It was awesome. So I'm going to keep doing that over and over. So basically, anything that you think of that you want to explore, put it in the YouTube search bar and see if there's a meditation for it. Breathing. I've come up with this breathing technique that I call square breathing. I always breathe the same way. The reason that I breathe the same way is that I use the breathing as a way to focus myself. So what you do is you breathe and it's going to be a square like that. You breathe in for four, a count of four. So it's one, two, three, four. You hold your breath for a count of four. One, two, three, four. You breathe out for a count of four. One, two, three, four. And you don't breathe for a count of four. One, two, three, four. And I imagine my breath actually going in a square. It's kind of weird, but that's in my mind because my eyes are closed, but in my mind, my breath is going in a square. So let's try it again. You breathe in through your nose for a count of four. One, two, three, four. You hold your breath. One, two, three, four. You breathe out through your mouth. One, two, three, four. You don't breathe. One, two, three, four. So let me show you what it looks like. be pretty noisy breathing and to me it sounds like the ocean like okay and when you breathe out you should make that sound okay you breathe it in and when you breathe out it should go kind of like the sigh that you make when you're super frustrated like that but a slow long one got it Here's the other variation on the breathing that I really love. When you breathe in through your nose, you breathe in very slowly, hold your breath, breathe out very slowly. Now on this last part, when you're holding, you know, you're not breathing, you say, thank you. And that's your thank you to God, your thank you to the universe, your thank you to source energy, to higher power, whatever you call, your God, you say thank you, and you're just thankful for everything in your life. Thank you. When you're trying to meditate, 
and you're sitting here quietly, your mind will start wandering. You'll get thoughts like all over the place because the monkey in your brain doesn't want to sit down and you want it to sit down and be quiet. So the monkey in your brain is jumping all around. You're trying to calm it. The way that you do it is focus on your breath. Focus on the square. Focus on the square. So what will happen is you're focusing on the square. You're going throughout with your meditation. You're starting to feel high because for some reason the oxygen will make you feel high. You'll be like, woo, I'm floating. This is really nice. And suddenly your brain will take you somewhere else. So when you notice that, it's totally okay. Some people are like, I can't do it. I messed up. Oh, no. It's okay. You're going to meditate from breath to breath. Okay? So you mess up. You just catch the next breath. Okay? You catch the next breath. So you mess up. You're over here thinking, oh, what do I need to do? Oh, wait. I'm out of alignment. Let me get in alignment. Let me catch the inhale. Let me get back on my square. And just keep going. And you, you will do that a hundred times <laughs> during that 10 minutes. And that's totally fine. As time goes on, you will actually get better and better and better and better at it. And then you'll be like so excited because your meditation practice will be on a roll. So my hands. My hands are the other thing that helps me to get focused again. I sit like this for a while, but I'll notice I'll kind of get a little lazy with it. And then I get to my feet and I start messing with my feet and that gets me unfocused. I'll start checking out my toenails and it'll get me unfocused. So what I do, which is totally fine, like I say, come back to the breath. What I do is I take the same posture with the two fingers touching, but I connect them. Okay, and then I let the other fingers touch. Now, I am no guru. I'm no expert. I don't know what this means, okay? Some people are like, oh, that has a name. I bet it does because I saw it in a magazine. I saw it in Oprah magazine, actually. But I notice that this keeps my hands occupied enough to where I focus on keeping my fingertips touched um, and I don't focus on anything else. I've taught my daughter how to do this. She's three. I taught her how to do it because a lot of times if I get up early and I'm meditating, my kid who doesn't sleep will get up with me. So I'll put her in my lap and I'll have my fingers like this in front of me. She'll have her fingers like this in front of her and I'll rock her like this. It keeps her a little bit quieter to where I can continue meditating and it gives her something to do with her hands. Guided meditation. So I told you that I use YouTube and I use guided meditations. Well, the good thing about guided meditations is that they tell you what to do. They tell you where you are. They explain to you what things look like. It's almost like virtual reality. So you're sitting here. You have your eyes closed. You're in your, you're in your meditation posture. Your heart is leading. And they may tell you something like, you know, you're walking through, um, through a forest and you come upon an arched doorway made of stone. It's a visualization as well as a meditation. When they say look up at the canopy of trees, I'll look up. They say feel the sunshine on your skin, I'll feel it on my skin. If they say look down at the moss on the floor, I'll look down. I move around in my meditation. I'm not sitting here, um. Because you'll get the most out of your meditation if you're actually living it in your mind. That's what you want. You want your subconscious mind to be there that way you get the benefit of everything that the meditation is trying to show you. A lot of times people will say, you know, 10 to 15 minutes to meditate. I don't have time for that. I used to say that even especially if I'm at work and I'm at my desk and, you know, there's a time crunch. Like maybe there's um, I have a, a document that's due that day and it takes me several hours to do. And I'm like, I don't have time. I need to get started. I need to get started. Well, what I, what I noticed is that if I take the time to meditate, my way is so much smoother. I'm more intuitive about what I'm doing. And it's amazing. It's almost like my time of meditation was time with God where I took the time to hear what he has to say. And he is now saying, I'm going to not only make up for the time that you spent communing with me, but I'm also going to give you 90% more time. If I get up early in the morning to meditate, you know, I may feel like, oh, I don't have time. You know, I'm rushing. I, I, can't, I don't have time to meditate. Well, if I don't meditate, you know, I catch all the red lights. I'm behind every single slow truck in Houston, it seems like. Like all of the, you know, cross country truck drivers decided to line up in front of me. And I'm like, really, seriously? 
But on days when I take the time to meditate, 10 minutes in the morning to meditate, I get all the green lights, traffic is light and easy, I'm <laughs> just smooth, everything in my day goes smoothly. And I'm thinking, wow, it's because I took the time to play with the universe and the universe is playing back with me. The universe is wanting to play with us. Like the universe wants to be with us and experience life through us and to make us happy and to make us excited and to, and to give us things to be thankful for so that we can be thankful and it'll give us more things to be thankful for. I mean, it's this crazy, never ending, wonderful cycle. Like, it's like the same thing with my kids. Like I give them things because I want them to be happy and when they're happy, it makes me want to give them more things. It's the same thing. So the universe wants to surprise and delight us at every moment around every corner. And when we take the time to be surprised and delighted by the universe or to take the time to quiet our mind and hear what God has to say, then suddenly we notice that God is speaking to us in more ways all the time in fun ways you know anything that we want abundance in money and health and love and success all these things are just showing up just because we took the time to say hey i acknowledge that you're in charge i love that this is what i want this is what i desire i'm just acknowledging the things that i do have I'm, not, I'm acknowledging the things in my life that are already here. And those things make me so happy. And it goes from the smallest little things to the biggest, biggest things. I'm happy that I was mowing the yard and I found a dime on the ground. That was a sign to me from the universe saying, here's money, money is everywhere for you. I go to the mailbox and I get checks and checks and checks in the mail randomly that I wasn't expecting, like thousands of dollars, it's all connected. But if I if I wasn't to acknowledge it, if I if I didn't um, appreciate that these things were happening in my life, then they wouldn't happen that way. And I can tell you that because I spent 40 years on the other side <laughs> of this life. Once again, it doesn't take away from anything that I believe. I actually believe more strongly now in what the Bible says because I can see it in my life that's happening. You have to be able to hear what God is trying to say. And we can't hear what God is trying to say these days when the news is 24 hours and the radio is always on and there's always something to watch on YouTube and there's always something going on on Facebook and there's people around us all the time. It becomes really super important to find a quiet time and a quiet space to quiet your mind to hear what the Almighty is trying to tell you. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, let me know and I can clarify. Don't forget to check me out on boldworldplanners.com where you will hopefully find tools to help you to manifest the abundance in your life in several different ways, in several different areas of your life. Tutorials and courses. Courses to help you manifest cash quickly and courses to help you manifest weight loss. Okay, until next time, bye.